Okay, what's good everybody? Welcome to The Closing Beat. Happy, happy Friday. Hope you're having a good week and the week was good to you. Well, the markets were good to you and this is our quick stock market update show that we do to go over the markets, right? We'll explain the good, the bad, and the ugly. There wasn't a whole lot of bad today, uh, but we'll be sure to go over everything for you. We're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. That's what we do. We invest for our customers. We teach our customers. We are fiduciaries and we are teachers. Our goal is to educate, bring you up to speed so that you know what's going on. When the markets do well, you know how you participated. When the markets do poorly, you know how much to be scared. <laughs> so uh, this is our uh, update that we do for that. I'm standing today. It's just one of those days you got to stand and uh, we'll talk about all of this course as we go. Uh, by the way, our class last night uh, was on the basics. The funds that are in your account, how we pick them and manage them. We use our own funds here, so we build our own uh, funds for our customers. So we went over that. If you're one of our customers, go into the dojo. It is all, uh, it's the most current video that's available. Um, if you're not one of our customers uh, and you don't know what that is, that's just one of our stock market, or it's one of our, um, our video library, actually, that we use. Uh, to kind of keep every class that we privately do for customers uh, just in a nice little place so they can log in, check it out, not have anything to worry about there. Uh, so that's available there to you. All right, on your screen to the right-hand side, you can actually see um, you've got the Dow higher by 269 points, adding 1% on the day. You got the S&P adding 20 points, NASDAQ 36 points. Great day, right? Really great day, and it actually started overnight, right? So it's another one of those days where they, you wake up and everybody goes, yay, banks, earnings, everything's great. Not necessarily true. Really what happened was the Chinese uh, markets overnight. If you happen to watch that sort of thing, there were two main uh, data sources. One I pay attention to, one I do not. So I can't help you there. Uh, Chinese exports, right? Big focus over there in China. Um, those numbers came in higher by 14%, which it, I always tell them, Right? I always tell my customers, when we say a percentage, you sh ask yourself, is that better than normal? Is that average? Where do we stand? Don't just throw a percentage at me, Dustin, and try to impress me. Where do we stand? And 14% uh, was double, double the expectation. So really, really nice overnight. And what you saw was about 3.30 in the morning Eastern time, you saw the U.S. markets just surge, man, blast off. It was like, okay, we can go to bed. Everything's cool. The markets are going to open positive. Well, the markets opened up today, and we had, you know, if you've been watching, we had earnings today from J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, uh, and PNC Bank, the regional banks, and they did really well. Uh, well, for the most part, their earnings were all really good, and so that further fueled the overall rally. Uh, so if you take a look at the S&P 500 today, you basically see just a nice, quiet, strong <laughs> day in the market. Down on the bottom hand, right hand side is, uh, of your screen, you can actually see how the markets did minute by minute. The red dashed line is what you look at there at the bottom. That's the closing price from yesterday. So today we started higher and we stayed higher all day long. Very, very steady gains there. Um, We'll go over the sectors in a minute that helped uh, sort of cover that. For now, we've got earnings next week that continues with the financials. We've got uh, Goldman Sachs on Monday morning. We've got Citigroup on Monday morning. Uh, JB Hunt's a transportation stock. That'll be out later in the uh, evening after the market closes. Um, and I got some stats for you here. If you like Goldman Sachs, uh, they're expecting $5.02 of earnings, $8.9 billion in revenue. Now, the average change for this stock is rather flat. Let me see if this works. Been having some troubles here with this one. So far, it seems good. Let me see what we got. So if we pull up Goldman Sachs, um, I'm gonna zoom in here. This is our, our sort of dashboard for our customers. You can actually go play along with me. If you're one of our customers, just log into the dojo. It should be your home page. Um, now, Goldman Sachs, the average change for the stock is really nothing. The stock tends to make its move ahead of earnings or just slightly after. The day of earnings, which will be Monday, if you go back all of their earnings reports, the average change is negative 0.05%, which tells you eh, it doesn't usually do much. Now that doesn't mean that Monday it's not gonna do much, it just means that historically it's a pretty quiet day from where it opens to where it closes. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, of course, you know, we'll hope for the best. Um, now, statistically, uh, Goldman Sachs beats on earnings 90% of the time. In their entire history of reporting earnings, they beat 90% of the time on, on earnings. They beat 75% of the time on revenue. They are very dialed in, so it is very rare. We have to you know, be in some pretty tough times for them to beat. Now, if you like Citi, um, 
not really as popular as it used to be. If you like Citi, of course, it looks good. They report um, Monday as well. They only beat on earnings 74% uh, of the time, but this stock tends to have a larger, wider range. So if you like that activity, you want a stock that's gonna be moving or you're an active trader for some reason during the day, uh, Citi would be the one to focus on. Average uh, change on the day of earnings is over 1%. All right, let's move on. So financials today, the uh, earnings from JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, PNC, helping the large financials, also helping regionals. On our new watch list over here, you can see regionals added 2% on the day. Uh, big financials, XLF, almost added 2% on the day. Uh, very strong, moving above resistance. However, always zoom out, always look at what you're dealing with there. Ah, oh, it's gonna fight me, I'm sorry. Give me a second here, we'll pull it back. Um, but always look at uh, the resistance going further. Where the uh, XLF stopped today was right at resistance. So we're not out of the woods yet. That's the bottom line. Definitely not out of the woods on the uh, financials. The regionals, great, great day. They've got a big head uh, overhead resistance there they've been trying to work through. PNC Bank, definitely a helpful um, sort of... Uh, performer today to help out there. Uh, so PNC Bank earnings came in better than expected. Um, let me see what I got here for you. Bam, there we go. I want to be able to show you this here, so I'm just going to take a second. Sorry, this, the uh, program here, we did a whole upgrade and hopefully the audio is a little different and stuff. Uh, I'm going to change some of the things. Anyways, uh, financials. So when I zoomed out here, look, over here, it's exactly where we stopped today, that 2750 area for resistance. Not out of the woods yet. Uh, regional banks looking good. Still a handful, obviously a lot of regional banks left to report. This one has more challenges going forward if you had to, if you had to pick, right? Uh, if we look at... Um, Let's go through some of the other sectors real quick. If we look at uh, tech and semiconductors, really strong. Semiconductors, or the SMH, if you follow that, broke to new highs today, looking really good there. Uh, that's now about a 30% gain on the year. Remember, 20% of the S&P 500 is tech stocks. If you were to zoom into that, of the 20%, software is the biggest um, category of technology, that meaning it's the biggest weighting. So, you know, your Microsofts, things like that. And uh, semiconductors are the, in third place. I think it's like four or five percent of the S&P 500. You need the tech stocks, you need semiconductors, and you need the banks all to rally in order to have a significant positive day. You got all of that today, so that's all I really wanted to point out. Uh, industrials move back towards this high, hinting at another little breakout, a bullish, bullish pattern here in the short term. Um, limited risk to reward, so the technical traders are going to look at this and go, ah. Do, do I buy this here and play the breakout only for such a little profit? We'll see what happens. Just wanted to point that out. Um, XOP, your oil explorers, one of the, well, the best performer on our list. This is just a list that I put together. Um, up 3.3% on the day. This is all M&A uh, stuff. Anadarko Petroleum's getting bought by uh, CV, uh, Chevron. Uh, that'll make Chevron the second largest oil uh, nationally or globally. It'll make um, ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil. It'll make Chevron uh, second largest in that space. Uh, so that deal going through, helping out a lot of these oil explorers. Maybe this is sort of, everybody always does this. If one big merger takes place, then they always go, well, maybe this means more mergers will take place. And so you got a positive day there for that one. Oil was positive, by, but just a, actually, yeah, just a little bit. Nothing really all that interesting. And then if I zoom on over to healthcare, holy cow. So healthcare, you know, I can use our little secret tool. If you click on this arrow over here, you get this thing here, and I'm gonna draw real quick, just a real sloppy uh, sort of pattern to show you. Take a line here, take a line here. You got a rising wedge. Very popular that people like to look at this sort of thing, and today we broke down underneath it. Not good, well yesterday we broke down, but today with the follow through, not good. Um, in short, look, I, Wherever you stand on this, I mean, the bottom line is what's hurting these guys is uh, Bernie Sanders. The stock market, there's actually odds on this. I shared it with our customers last month. What if Trump wins? What if the Democrats and Republicans exchange pleasantries in the House or exchange leadership and how that goes? There's actually odds on that, and the market makes uh, sort of predictions based on that or bets. And right now, the worst outcome would be Bernie Sanders becoming the president. Not because he's a bad guy, the stock market doesn't want to see Bernie Sanders as the president. Right now, he, you can see what he's doing to health care. If you want Medicare for all and you take out health care, well, these stocks are going to suffer. And it's not that, like, 
anybody's picking sides at the moment, Wall Street's looking for traction. Does he gain traction on that? If he gains traction on that, that's going to be increasingly more painful uh, for the healthcare stock. So um, we'll see. I mean, it's uh, welcome to political season, everybody. We're uh, we're uh, gonna have some fun this go around. I I can only imagine. Okay, I'll uh, keep you posted on that. J.P. Morgan. Here's the day. Four, almost five percent on the day. Great little breakout. Ah, it's gonna do it again. Anyways, J.P. Morgan with a great breakout today. Really the highlight of the earnings discussions today. J.P. Morgan and Disney were the only real stocks that got any significant attention. We'll cover Disney in a second. Uh, but J.P. Morgan beating on earnings. Uh, they did great, really. They beat in. They beat earnings by 30 freaking cents. So. I think I just mentioned yesterday, like how everything probably looks good unless they miss by like 20 cents. They beat by 30 cents. So way to go, JP Morgan. Um, a lot of people don't think of this, but it's JP Morgan and Chase. Well, if you look at their earnings this go around, JP Morgan did good, but and Chase was really one of the key drivers towards their overall earnings there. Uh, killed it, right? So their uh, consumer banking sector also just doing great. There's a chase on every single corner now. Uh, they're killing it there. The stock is now comfortably, comfortably back above the 200-day moving average. Um, that really helped out today. Uh, Wells Fargo reported earnings as well. They did good, right? Wells Fargo earnings were good. Revenue came in good. Uh, the stock sold off. There we go. Stock sold off on the day because the uh, CFO, he actually, um, when he made his comments on the conference call, he lowered all kinds of different guidance in there, more particularly interest income, which, hey, that's a huge part of what these banks do, especially the regional banks. Um, so the thought was, oh my gosh, what if the regional banks are having these sort of issues? You go over to PNC Bank, they said, um, no, we beat on earnings. Everything's good. Uh, revenue, a little bit better than expected. Um, and oh yeah, interest income. Yeah, it's doing great. It was actually higher by 4%. So what's wrong, Wells Fargo? Uh, look, I say that mean, right? <laughs> you could tell I don't really like Wells Fargo, but um, the point being, at, for a moment there, it was, uh-oh, is, if you look at the, the uh, sell-off in the bank stocks earlier today, the, it was, uh-oh, is this interest income gonna be an issue? Turns out it's just Wells Fargo's issue. And so, or at least for now, it's just Wells Fargo's issue. So the stock was, uh, Wells Fargo was lower, PNC was higher. That was earnings driven. Disney, do you like your streaming Disney services? Um, yesterday, they announced the Disney Plus. Uh, we got more clarity on that today. Here's what I'll point out. We don't need the chart for this. The stock just soared today. Just great, great one day, 12% uh, day. That doesn't happen. Disney just doesn't go and do that very often. So very good. The difference here is, if you just saw the Apple streaming service, just, just go back a couple weeks with us. If you go back and you say, oh my God, the Apple streaming thing, it was so exciting because they had uh, Jennifer Aniston and Steven Spielberg and Oprah showed up and I think Big Bird was there. So it's like, oh my God, but wait, what is this soft, what are you offering? We, we don't know, what's the pricing, the users, what sort of efforts, what sort of costs are going into all this? Apple gave us nothing. They gave you really nothing. But now you look at Disney, and I think investors came over to Disney getting excited today because Disney laid it out. Man, it's $6.99 a month. We are competing against Netflix. We will be putting more content up there as we get more of our licenses back. We will be creating content and stuff. Um, so it was like, there was no question to ask Disney. They just laid it out. No fanfare, no magical fireworks. I mean, I'm sure they did a little bit, but it wasn't this big deal. The guy, the CEO basically sat down. He's like, yeah, we're coming for you, Netflix. Um, and here's what we're doing. Left no room for questions. And I think that was huge today, not only for Disney moving higher, uh, but also for why Netflix really kind of got punished there. Um, so if you look at Netflix down on the day by almost 5%, moving to the lower end of the range. And I think that's because Disney wasn't just talking a game. They came out and they were extremely specific. All right, lastly, we mentioned it already. That's not the symbol. Uh, Anadarko Petroleum low, uh, higher today by 32%. Stock getting bought out by Chevron, $33 billion in cash and stock. I believe it was $33 billion. Uh, so Chevron lower on the day by 5%. Um, here we go, another merger. <laughs> Another freaking merger. That's uh, if you were to measure the market potential based on mergers, you'd be awfully bullish right now. Just incredible, incredible. Uh, Uber officially filing their paperwork, ten billion dollar IPO. We already mentioned that yesterday and the day before. I just figure, you know, it's official now. Bring it up. Um, and Campbell Soup is selling Bolt House Farms, uh, five hundred million dollars. 
Nice. All right, if you have any questions, I'm happy to ha help you where I can. Otherwise, uh, it'll be back to work for me, and we'll, uh, we'll do it. Uh, oh, tech talk, huh? <laughs> uh, Disney's a great company. Are you guys excited about Disney? The streaming price wars have begun. You know what's funny is prices have gone nothing but up. So, it's, you know, Disney's joining the mix, Netflix, Hulu, Apple, all these people, uh, but prices have gone nothing but up. So, are we really benefiting? Not to mention, have you looked at like, like okay, I gotta get internet, and, and then I gotta get a streaming service, but they don't have everything I want, I gotta get this other streaming service. I think we have room for consolidation. The problem is, once we consolidate, oh, there go the prices again. So, it's just like, it's cell phone companies all over again. Remember this? I, it depends on how old you are. Cell phone companies came out and all of a sudden there were more and more and more and more of them. And it was like, oh my God, we're going to get great prices and carry around a phone. No, there was consolidation, continues to be consolidation with T-Mobile and Sprint. And now that we have this consolidation, are prices higher or lower? They're ridiculous. Cell phones are expensive. So it's going to be the same thing. We're essentially just moving away from normal TV, have the streaming TV, give it 10 years, we'll be paying the same amount that we were always paying for normal TV anyways. And there'll be ads, by the way. <laughs> They'll work it in there. Uh, Brian says, thanks for all the great work. Some companies offer stock to employees at discount prices. How does that work? Does that make any sense? Yeah, very common. 5% uh, to 15% you could get as far as a discount. There may be a lockup period, so you want to check that out. There may, there may also be blackout periods, depending on where you stand in the company and your level of access to information. Um, so there may be some catches. They're not bad catches, but as long as you are just saying, okay, I'll, I'll take a little bit. Don't go bet the farm on your company now. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people participate in that. It is very common. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, with so many stocks at highs right now, generally what percentage of money do you have waiting in your portfolio to use at any time? Um, depends on your time frame. What are we holding the money for? We holding the money because you're a year or two away from whatever goal you have and you're like, well, look, if the markets fall, I'll put it to work. Uh, if they don't fall, then I need that money, right? Because I, I have a goal or I need it closer or sooner rather than later. If you're a long-term investor, I do it way differently here. I say, you have a number. Every one of our customers knows what number they need to put in their 401k, their Roth IRA, their TSP, whatever it is that they have, they know how to divide their money up. Now, go divide your money up, right? And hit your goal. However, if the markets fall somewhere along the way and you want to speed that up, and let's say you were putting $20 a week away or for lack of a number, I'll just say $20 a week and that gets you to your goal. So you just put the money away, you're like, great, markets are doing good, I'm putting my money away, everything's cool. Now the markets start to fall. That's where I tell people, well, we know what your goal is, but now make your deposit $25. There's no need to guess the bottom, right? And sit with cash and then try to put it in at the bottom. As the markets fall, increase your deposit, $25, $30, whatever it is that you wanna do, knowing that you're still gonna hit the ultimate goal. It's just when the markets fall, you wanna buy a little cheaper. That makes people like engaged in the markets. It gets them excited about buying dips. It helps them lower their average cost in the long run. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So it's a lot better than saying, I'm sitting on 60% cash. A friend of mine's an advisor. I looked him up the other day, we were talking, and uh, he has 60, he has only 32% he's been invested in the markets for a year and a half now. And I'm like, why man, come on, like put your money to work. No, no, markets are gonna fall, markets are gonna fall. And I'm like, what do your customers say? Like they missed out on all of that. And they're like, no, no, markets are gonna fall. It's just a train of thought. Not that he's wrong. He may be right at some point and uh, put the money to work, but uh, I disagree. So that's a long answer to a really short question. <laughs> Is Boeing out of fire uh, right now? So uh, Boeing uh, positive today, you got about two and a half percent. Apparently they've done almost a hundred test flights and they've gone really well with the um, 737 Max software. Uh, We'll see. I didn't see anything like too exciting today other than that. I think I put it in the scroller below. Yep. Uh, so with Disney going up so much, other than Netflix, do you think it took money from other parts of the market or is that a lot of new money? Yeah, definitely took some money away from Netflix, Apple, and the others today. Um, it, like if you really look at this stuff, I think Netflix probably should have been hit a little bit more. I would have thought about 6 or 7% on the day, maybe more than that. Um, Look at the cost. If you ever like looking into this stuff, look at the, the costs versus the number of subscribers. Now, Disney is a guess, right? They want 80 to 90 million subscribers uh, in the short term. Okay, 
there's going to be a cost to acquire, a cost to produce content, a cost to acquire their licenses again, but it's nothing compared to what Netflix spends. So I think Disney is really, and Apple also, uh, they're starting to show, oh my God, Netflix spends a lot of money to produce content. That's not sustainable. Uh, so I would have thought that have shined a little more light on Netflix today, but everybody was looking at Disney. It's all good. That's all good for them. Um, what do we think of, uh, what is it? Oh, Carvana. Yeah. Uh, so this is the online car buying uh, company. Um, I, or my wife bought her last car. Same thing. They, you just, we clicked and they brought the car. We signed some paperwork. We took it for a test drive and we had the car. It was really simple, cheaper than we could do anywhere else uh, without spending eight hours haggling at a dealership. So I was like, okay, let's see if it works. We tested it out, actually did a video on it to show when they dropped it off and the test drive and everything. Um, incredibly strong, incredibly, uh, their sales incredibly strong and increasing there. So lots of good stuff going on with Carvana right now. Um, that could change, but at least as of now, from a, let me see, where are we at here? Almost back to high, so if you're thinking about buying now, it's a little tough. But take a look at their sales. If you can look at their sales, you had 860, well, let's, you had 370 million in 2016. That's not bad, right? You had 80, or 806 million in 2017, 2 billion in 2019. Now that's sales growth, right? So very impressive there. They're still working on their earnings. This is a, this is a company that spends what they make to continue to grow. So that's a little bit of a negative there, but you, hey, I don't have anything really bad, uh, bad to say about it. Is Carvana legit <laughs> as far as a company and buying a car? Yeah, I, I would do it again. I mean, I provided that the pricing stays competitive. Uh, that was a piece of cake. I clicked a button. Uh, it was about three days later and they called and said, we're around the corner, you, you home? <laughs> and they just dropped off the car. That was it. And no problems ever since then. And they gave us a gift card too. Uh, anyways, I don't get paid for that. Like I just made a video just for fun because I thought it was interesting. Um, oh, I forgot you the other day. <laughs> I thought you said if I said your name, you would open an account, not gift secrets. So uh, we'll have to revisit that, uh, that's, that uh, arrangement. <laughs> uh, Kirk says, Elon Musk will be gone or fired soon. You don't like the man, do you? You think he's out? What do you think happens to the stock if he is, right? So let's just put that aside. You, that's your opinion. You think the stock takes off or you think the stock tanks if he does get pushed out? Very interesting there. Cool. Well, hey, it's Friday. You guys should be out and about having a good time. Um, I appreciate you guys watching, uh, having a good time with it, of course. Um, that's all I have for you here today. I'm gonna wrap it up, get back to work. Uh, if I helped you in some way, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, we'll be back next week uh, to go over all of this again, and uh, we'll see. It's gonna be a busy week, right? Next three weeks, gonna be real busy uh, earnings-wise, so if you have a lot of stocks in your portfolio, you may wanna pay attention. All right, guys, enjoy. We will uh, talk to you then. Why should you choose Jazzwealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.